one of the most beloved musicians in Richmond, passed away this month. Herbert Debo Dabney was 68 years old. He could play everything, gospel, blues, swing, country, even classical. He was charismatic and was an absolutely one-of-a-kind performer. I'm Peter Solomon. Join me for a celebration of the life and music of Debo Dabney tonight at 706 on VPM Music, 93.1 and 107.3 or online at vpm.org. This is VPM Music, 93.1 WWL Beatrix, 107.3 WBBT-FM Powhatan, and 88.9 WCVE-FM HD2 Richmond. Hi, I'm Peter Solomon. You're listening to VPM Music, 93.1 and 107.3. On Thursday, April 9th, one of the most beloved musicians in the Richmond community passed away. Herbert Allen Debo Dabney was 68 years old. This hour, we'll be paying tribute to Debo, a great musician and a beautiful human being. I was fortunate, like many others in this community, to call Debo a friend, and I got together with him on numerous occasions to play music, he even played at my wedding. My wife, who's not generally a fan of jazz, loved Debo from the first time she saw him on one of our early dates. I vividly recall how uncomfortable I was when he referred to my then-girlfriend as Mrs. Solomon. She decided that the one thing she really wanted at her wedding was to have Debo play piano, which he did. I first met Debo in 1999. Every Thursday night, he played piano with the band Chez Rue at a Main Street restaurant bar called Southern Culture. It was a crowded scene with a lot of smoke and drinking and dancing and noise. The music included blues, jazz, country, and swing. And Debo had a special feature on a Ray Charles number called What Did I Say? He always knocked it out of the park. Coming up later in the program, we'll hear remembrances from some of Debo's friends, including several musicians he worked with. In 2014, Debo was preparing to make his very first recording as a leader. The session was a live concert recorded at Capitol Ale House that featured Debo on the Hammond B3 organ. We're going to start off this tribute with an interview that I made with Debo just before that session took place. Think of a musician who has more fun when he plays than Debo Dabney. He's an animated performer, and the joy that he feels when he makes music is contagious. Debo's in his early 60s now. Born in Mannequin Sabin in Goochland County, he moved to Henrico when he was six and then came to Richmond when he was about 11. For Debo, growing up in Richmond was a mixed bag. It was the 50s and early 60s when he was coming up, so of course segregation was still a fact of life. Segregation, like anything, there was some good points and there were bad points to it. Mm -hmm. The good point is being an Afro-American, you had more unity because we were grouped together and there were places that you could not go. But because of being oppressed, it seemed to unify us because we made the most of what we had. can think back to a time when Jackson Ward was still the thriving center of Richmond's African-American community. My uncle had a business with jukebox, so my father used to uh, collect the money, and so I got a chance to hang out down 2nd Street when it was really like the little Harlem of the South, and it was just unbelievable. Then there were the times Debo was able to hang out backstage in what's now known as the Altria Theater. When I was a kid, my was a promoter. He brought shows to what used to be called the mosque. I'm cooking people of that caliber. And so 
at a very young age, I got to hang out with them backstage, and that was a motivating factor to check out their charisma and aura. presence of the people was the thing that stood out the most. These people, to me, were the innovators of rhythm and blues, and every show was just phenomenal. The one cat that really stood out to me was Sam Cooke. Listen while I talk to you, I tell you what we're gonna do, there's a new thing that's going on. Because he had so much charisma. He was a tall gentleman. He was the only guy I remember back then that wore what they call an afro. Every other entertainer had what I called a process, and it was chemicals in your hair and this real slick look and it it was really cool look too all the other entertainers were great but time he put foot on the stage everybody just started screaming he just started smiling and when he opened his mouth his voice went so well with his stature do you like good music and, you know, like I say, I saw James Brown and Jackie Wilson and a lot of groups, Manhattan, Mr. Platters, but Sam Cooke just had something that I just have not seen since. It's just such an innovator. I think it's a statement. Sam Cooke wrote the book. Devo's public performing career, outside of church that is, goes back to when he was a little boy, hanging out at the family business. My family ran, I guess you could call it a juke joint, and you could buy alcohol or drink, you could get you a 50 cent shot. <laughs> and so, and, and uh, I was a kid and I used to watch these guys and they would get the little 50 cent shot. And then sometimes I'd just play just a little something on the piano and it kind of lured me into business. I don't know if it was the alcohol or whatever, but they seemed to accept what I was doing. So. That's a way of getting approval and, you know, it just motivated me. <laughs> Listening to Debo, it's pretty apparent that he's a musician with a thorough grounding in gospel music. For the last 20 years, Debo has played the organ at Trinity Baptist Church. He says playing in church is all about collaboration. The function of the church musician, it complements the preacher because you want to get the spirit going, you want to get the goodness, you want to forget about how bad your week was or whatever the kid's not doing right, um, the dog chewed up the couch. So you come there to comfort your soul and so there's a lot of blues in the um, Baptist church it's bluesy it's gospel it's emotional and it sets the pace and if the piano or organ or the music sets up the spirit it makes it so much easier for the preacher to de deliver the message and I guess you could say they work hand in hand like Batman and Robin.
You're listening to an interview with Debo Dabney made in 2014. I spoke with him just as he prepared to play a live concert at Capitol Ale House, in which he made his very first recording. Most of the time you'd hear Debo on piano, but this concert was going to feature him on a Hammond B3 organ. I asked him about the challenges of playing that instrument. The challenge with the organ, which was extremely hard at, at first, is you got everything going a different direction. One hand going one direction, another hand going another direction, foot going another direction, and another foot going another direction. Now, when I first started, I started, I kept thinking about how does everything go a different direction? And that used to, you could say, hang me up. But I got to a point, and I still have a lot of learning to do, where I just said, just let everything do what it do, like Ray Charles. And so you just get in a zone or area, and you just start. And at a certain point, some type of spirit takes over. And you look down and you go, wow, they actually are independent of each other. But that is the challenge as opposed to piano where the main concept is right hand, left hand. But when you take um, feet and legs going different direction, and it's just an obstacle. And like in life, you just want to overcome the hurdle and mostly not think about what you're doing, just let it happen. Do, do your best. Your best is good enough. As it turned out, Debo's organ playing was a lot better than just good enough. Here's Preston Foster's Got My Mojo Working. It's a number that was also recorded by Jimmy Smith. Debo is joined by guitarist Alan Parker, bassist Jason Jenkins, and drummer Billy Williams. It was a recording made in a concert at Capitol Ale House, presented by the Richmond Jazz Society, and released on an album called Organized. <laughs> But it just won't work on you I got my mojo working, baby But it just won't work on you Not yet I done tried it in New York City and now I'm gonna try it on you, baby. I got my mojo working, baby. But it just won't work on you. I got my gooby dust. I got my mojo working, baby. just won't work on you. I done tried in New York City, and now I'm gonna try it on you, baby. Tell them about that mojo.
got my mojo percolating, baby. And it's gonna work on you. I got my mojo working, baby, right now. And it's gonna work on you. Tried in New York City. Whoa, Lord, whoa, Lord, whoa, Lord, whoa, Lord, help. Don't need none of the other stuff. And now it's gonna work on you, baby. You're listening to a tribute to Debo Dabney on VPM Music, 93.1 and 107.3. We just heard Got My Mojo Working from his recording Organized. Debo was on the organ. You also heard from Alan Parker, guitar, Jason Jenkins, bass, and Billy Williams, drums. Throughout this hour, we'll be hearing remembrances of Debo from some of his friends. This first one is from singer Desiree Roots Centeo. This is Desiree Roots Centeo. And my relationship to Debo Dabney is long time friend, long, long time. Uh, I even called him my big brother at one point because Debo looked a lot like my dad. He was very fair skinned uh, with red hair and freckles. And Debo has that sandy colored hair. I don't think he had the freckles. But he definitely had the same temperament as my dad. So sometimes it called he called me baby sis. <laughs> the first time I officially remember meeting Debo is when I was 12 years old. My dad played for a church in Elmont, Virginia. And Debo was there for an event. And my dad introduced me to him. And I immediately thought, wow, you look like my dad. My mom used to joke and say she was going to make Debo take a DNA test because they look so much alike. She thought he could have been my dad's son. <laughs> Debo was very unique in his style of playing because he he took any song and just made it his own. Whether it was injecting a Looney Tunes song or uh, something from the 70s sitcoms, any TV show. He was, I called him a TV baby. He would put in the Young and the Restless theme or uh, the Addams Family theme and the way he could just twist that into a solo was always amazing to me. I think as I matured in the music industry and, and hearing him in a jazz genre, what surprised me the most was as I got older, recognizing the spirituality he had. He was so grounded in his faith and hearing that pour out when he played gospel music, it was almost like the organ was preaching to you because just every ounce of belief that he had in God came out of his fingers onto that organ keyboard and it was just mesmerizing. taught me integrity in the music industry and how to always carry yourself as a star. He said, when you meet stars, you don't fall over yourself because if you're in the same room as a star, then that means you're a star too. And so he always taught you how to carry yourself as a star, but to still be humble and to stay grounded 
And that was definitely Debo because he was one of the brightest stars I've ever known. Desiree Root Centeo on VPM Music. Maybe there were stars before I met you. And maybe there were silver moonbeams too. But until I saw them all around you, oh, I was blind because I never knew. And all my lips could say my eyes had told you. But still my lips would say it over and over. And all my life I'm longing to hold you. Every single day I'll say once more. I never knew that roses grew. Skies were blue, all green. And I never knew when breezes blew what a summer breeze could be. And I never knew that dreams came true and took your cares away. And I never knew what love could do. Till I met you today Never knew that roses grew or his skies were blue or green. And I never knew one breeze is blue, what a summer breeze could say. And I never knew that dreams came true and took your care. What love could do Until I met you today Until I met you today The Shea Rue Orquette, featuring Debo Dabney on piano, Roger Carroll on tenor sax, John Greenberg trumpet, Brian Solster bass, Johnny Bishop on harmonica, Johnny Hot on drums, and Charles Arthur on guitar. That recording was made by Bruce Olson at Montrose Recording. Hello, I'm 
Roger Carroll. I played music with Debo Dabney for 39 years. I first met Debo, I was 19 years old. We were playing uh, every Friday night with, in a Jack Diamond's band over a place called something, someplace else on Forest Hill Avenue. Debo and I, we, you know, struck off a good friendship right away. You know, we, of course, we all admired him. He was such a uh, wonderful musician. And I think about words to describe Debo. He was a really genuine, kind person, honest, but more importantly, he was deliberate. Debo, you, you could tell, had lived, you know, and seen a lot of things. And he had a lot of beliefs, and he, uh, he, you know, he, he wasn't afraid to speak them, you know. He would never argue about it. I never saw Debo argue with anyone, but I would always kindly discuss anything with you, you know. Debo's sense of humor was just through the roof, his sarcasm. In his music and in his conversation, you always heard a lot of humor, as well as a lot of everything, all the emotions. What I loved about Debo is he always gave it his all. I guess what he taught all of us was, I used to hear him always say, you know, it was about endurance, sticking in the game. Not always about, you know, talent, but just always doing, sticking with, him, with what you do and believing in it. spiritual person. He always talked about the spirituality of, of everything. I remember we had two rehearsals in all the years we had Shea Blue together. And I don't think we ever played a first note of music. We hung out and talked and, and what Debo called the fellowship. And he, he said that was more important than uh, actually talking about notes and music was knowing who you played with. And I sure am happy for the 30 some years that I got to play with my brother and, and he was definitely family and we'll miss him. Thank you. Saxophonist Roger Carroll remembering Debo Dabney, his friend and musical partner of nearly 40 years. We'll listen next to some of the music that Roger and Debo played together with Shea Rue. This is I've Got a Crush on You on VPM Music. How glad the many millions of Annabelle's and Liam's would be capture me but you were so persistent you walled down my resistance I fell and it was swell I'm your big and breathing handsome Romeo and how I want you I shall never ever know it's not just you're attractive, but oh, my heart grew active when you came into view. I've got a crush on you, sweetie pie, all the day and night time. Hear me say, I never had the least notion that I could fall with such emotion. And could you go? Oh, could you care? For a cunning cottage that you and I could share the world will part my bus cause I've got a crush little baby on you.
Music 93.1 and 107.3. I'm Peter Solomon. You're listening to a celebration of the life and music of pianist and organist Debo Dabney. Support for VPM Music comes from our members and the University of Lynchburg, encouraging students to find their passions, share them with the world, and build an education for the life they want. Now accepting applications, lynchburg.edu. And jazzrva.com, celebrating Richmond jazz and jazz musicians. Jazzrva.com features a calendar of local jazz concerts and performances. Jazzrva.com. And VCU Health, proud sponsor of Science Matters. Healing, teaching, exploring, so that each generation can be healthier than the one before. VCU Health, committed to making life better by design. Visit vcuhealth.org to learn more. Bright Moments, this is B.J. Brown, Executive Director, Richmond Jazz Society. Debo Dabney was Music Director for our outreach bands for children and for senior citizens' audiences, the RGS Make Music With Me Band and the Bright Moments Jazz Band, respectively. But more importantly, he was a close friend and former schoolmate. I first met Debo at Randolph Junior High School, where he was known as Alan Dabney. We later both attended Maggie Walker High School in the late 60s, where we participated in the Maggie L. Walker Mighty Green Dragons Marching Band. He played tuba and brass instruments. I was a majorette. We had so much fun. Debo had his own band in high school, the Alan Dabney Trio, with Debo on piano, Patricia Perry on upright bass, Alan Gibbs on drums. They played school events and dances around town. Glenroy Bailey later joined the band on flute, but the name didn't change. That was so funny. After school hours, Debo also played piano with local professional musicians like Joe Kennedy and Van Lighty and others. He was so unique. Uh, Debo could play anything he'd ever heard. Theme music from television shows, gospel, bebop, swing, children's nursery rhymes, popular R&B hits. And he incorporated these elements into his music whenever he felt like it. He was a perfect accompanist for any vocalist, whether they could sing or not. He could follow them, whatever key they hit, made them sound good. His most unique characteristic was the ability to become one with a song. It was like he'd reach a different zone where he'd close his eyes, bop his head in rhythm, and then let his fingers communicate the music straight from his heart. It was exciting to watch him play as it was to hear him. We talked by phone sometimes for hours about the local jazz scene, politics, movies, and sports. He was also my boxing buddy. We called each other the next day after watching boxing matches and analyzed the fight. We'd size up each opponent's strengths and weaknesses and laugh when the cocky, overconfident fighter got himself knocked out. 
but what never ceased to amaze me, I could hear him practicing scales in the background at breakneck speed the whole time we talked. I will always remember how humble Debo was. He was such a good pianist, but he never let it go to his head. He was always generous to other musicians. He spoiled his audiences, honoring requests, and sometimes playing longer than he should have. He dressed immaculately for his gigs, like he just stepped out of Gentleman's Quarterly magazine. And most of all, I'll remember the forever smile when he saw me. Sometimes a wide, toothy grin, and sometimes like a Cheshire cat with a secret. Debo was a personification of the definition of jazz, the spontaneous, creative expression of the soul. He embodied it and embraced it, and freely expressed himself through his playing like no one else. Debo was a legend in his own time. He attracted fans of every race, age, creed, and color. He was one of the most requested musicians of our generation. Not everybody got him, but he stayed true to his convictions as to how to play his music. He was a product of everything that touched him, and he wasn't afraid to show it, to feel it, to make that ugly face while playing it. He was so astute, so in tune. He could look at an audience and on the spot completely change the set of tunes he told the band they would play. He loved entertaining. He loved to move his audience, to make you feel joy and pain, to comfort you when you'd lost a loved one or a lover, to take everyone to church and make you shout, even if it was Saturday night. He was one of a kind. Happy trails, Debo, until we meet again. B.J. Brown is executive director of the Richmond Jazz Society. You're listening to a remembrance and celebration of Debo Dabney on VPM Music 93.1 and 107.3. Here's another track from the album that Debo made in 2014. It's called Organ Grinder Swing. Alan Park on guitar, Jason Jenkins on bass, and Billy Williams on drums. <laughs>
Dabney with Alan Parker, Jason Jenkins, and Billy Williams on VPM Music. Our last remembrance of Debo comes from guitarist Ross Mel Glover Jr. My name, Ross Mel Glover Jr., guitar player. Uh, my relationship with Debo, childhood friend, bandmate with uh, one is a Juju, and uh, I knew him as a band leader. I played a few gigs with him. And my good buddy. Well, I first met him in uh, middle school, junior high school, over in the West End, Randolph Middle School. Uh, I've known him 50 some odd years. What adjectives describe him? Uh, wild, crazy, diligent, disciplined, hell of a good guy. Awesome musician. What was unique about Debo? Well, like I said, Debo was diligent, man. Debo practiced all of the time. When we were in junior high school at Randolph, after school, Debo went home. And when we passed by his house, you'd hear him playing some classical pieces. Or he'd be playing Hang On Snoopy by Young Ho Trio, Ramsey Lewis. He kept that work ethic his entire life. Uh, we always used to joke after talking to each other, okay, well, I'm going to go practice. Me too, Debo. I'd say one memorable event. Bo and I were playing for uh, One is a Juju. And we were playing at VCU. We were the opening act. And we took two girls that we were in junior high school and high school together with. And this is after we got back from college in the 70s. And we took the two sisters. And uh, after the show, one girl went with Gil and the other girl went with Brian Jackson. Left me and Debo standing there looking at each other saying, what the hell just happened? What surprised me about Debo the most was if you played in a band with him, you never knew what you were going to play next. We'd play one tune and end it, and Debo would play the theme of Days of Our Lives or some uh, peanut cartoon tune. And you didn't know if the next song was going to be in the same key or not. What I always remember about Bo, well, to me, Debo was Ramsey Lewis, Amar Jamal, and Kurt Lighting, and Joe Sample, all rolled up into one. I tell him that, and he didn't like it, but... Uh, that's the sound I always heard, regardless of what tune he called. That's the way I heard the music. One lesson I learned from Debo was, regardless to what life throws your way, always make the best of it. Do the best you can with what you got. Debo's lasting contributions, his sound, his heart, his spirit, and the way he touched everybody that he met through his music and just through his greetings and smile. That's Debo Dabney, both. 
Ross Mel Glover Jr., remembering Debo Dabney. I'm Peter Solomon, and this is VPM Music, 93.1 and 107.3. Thank you to all of the following people who helped make this program possible. Brian Solser, Roger Carroll, B.J. Brown, Desiree Rutsenteo, John Greenberg, and Ross Mel Glover Jr., Oh, man.